I wish we could uh, see each other more during the week. And uh, I think I'm trying to, uh, I'm thinking, you know, uh, most of you guys know, um, you know, uh, our former lead pastor, right? It's, it's been uh, uh, already, what, three weeks? Two weeks uh, since he, he uh, went back to, went back home, and I think we're trying to, um, I, I'm taking my time, you, you know, I'm slow, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to pray and discern, okay, what is, what is the best way, you know, for us to go about um, just building a community where it's not just about, I mean, for some of us, it's understandable, you know, we just have a lot going on, but just something more than that just meets on, on Sundays, you know, and just have uh, casual conversations, and uh, it's, 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 uh, it's been proven tough in Korea, the busy lifestyle. Uh, but I think, um, yeah, God is going to do it because it's, it's his thing. You know, it's his church, uh, his sheep. And um, so we're, we're just trying to follow uh, where the Holy Spirit is taking us. And um, today, I, you know, it happens to me, like, too often. But I think you know what I'm going to say. I, I had a message in mind. <laughs> And then I felt like, um, you know, I, ha- I have my notes back there. And then, yeah, yeah, Scott, don't look at it. Don't look at it. And I feel like God wants me to just take it in a new direction. And um, just really, I mean, I kind of had a, like a theological, you know, um, sermon or message prepared. And, and, and I love doing that because, you know, I like, I, I love theology and, uh, my wife suffers at home because <laughs> I'm like always trying to talk about, you know, different like theological ideas. But uh, I just felt like uh, just, you know, God wanting me to share more from, uh, from my heart and, and just really just speak to you uh, where you are. Okay. And we're just going to go to our passage. God didn't change the main passage. So thank God. <laughs> but uh, it's Isaiah 61. Okay, and like I said, I, I just want to kind of share my heart, and I, hopefully, you know, I'm not, I'll try to keep it short uh, because, you know, I can just kind of go on, right? On and on. Um, but. Just take our time, and uh, Isaiah 61, we'll read from, yeah, from verse 1, and just end of the chapter. Okay, and by the way, this uh, section, right, of the chapter of, chapter in Isaiah 61, this chapter 61, uh, it's, it's subtitled, The Ear of the Lord's Favor, right? The Ear of the Lord's Favor. And I'm going to come back to that, but let's start. Verse 1, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. So this is Isaiah speaking, but he's representing uh, Messiah, right? It's the messianic figure uh, foretold, right? Prophesied through Isaiah. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. They will be called oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. They will, rebu- they will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Strangers will shepherd your flocks, foreigners will work your fields and vineyards, and you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named to ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations, and in their riches you will boast. Instead of your shame, 
you will receive a double portion, and instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. And so you will inherit a double portion in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. And all who see them will acknowledge that they are people of the Lord, that, that the people, there are people the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes a sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. Um, so, you know, I'm just trying to feel where the Holy Spirit is, uh, you know, taking us today. Um, but I just want to ask you, you know, Jesus came, right, 2,000-some years ago, and, and he did this, right? This was his ministry. And um, maybe we don't have to go there, but if you look at Luke chapter 4, okay, Luke chapter 4 and verse 14, uh, 18 from 18, or maybe a little early on, it's the story of, of Jesus, right? He comes back from the wilderness, right? having spent 40 days and 40 nights tempted by the devil, right? And he overcomes. Um, and he begins his ministry, and it's very interesting that in Luke chapter 4, basically the first recorded sermon by Jesus, right? He quotes from this text, right? If you remember, right? In Luke chapter 4, right, it says, as, was it, as it was his custom, right? He goes to the synagogue, right? And, you know, he gets handed the the scroll, right, the scriptures, and he reads from Isaiah 61, right? and he basically says the same thing. The spirit of the Lord, the sovereign Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners, to proclaim the ear of the Lord's favor. So, you know, we, we, so we know that, right? Uh, we know that as, as, as truth. Right? That's, uh, we subscribe to that truth, you know, as Christians, right? That Jesus uh, came and he fulfilled, right, uh, the ministry of the anointed, right, the anointed one. But I, I want to ask you, you know, like, we, we know the story and uh, I hope, you know, you believe in it. Uh, you have given your life, right? to the truth of the gospel. Um, but are there any ways in our lives today that, you know, we still experience like, even though it says that Jesus came and fulfilled the ministry, right? He preached good news to the poor, right? He came to bind up the brokenhearted, right? He came to proclaim freedom, and, and, and he, he did that, right? But today, do you still feel like, right, that you are still, Right? In, in your soul, right, in your life, that you are among the poor, right? That you are still poor. There's still some, something lacking in your life, right? And obviously, I'm not talking about just, just lacking in, in, in the things you want to, you know, get for yourself, right? Just, just a, um, you know, a life of, of comfort and, and luxury. Uh, but I'm talking about, um, and I think you can relate to this, if, if you've really... Uh, been touched by God, and you've really believed in the gospel, and you know that, that God has worked, right, in your life, um, there, there's this sense, right, when, when you are, when something is not right, right, and, and, and you still come to church, and you, you serve, and you, you do all these things, um, but there, there's, a, there's a poverty of, of spirit, right, in your life, that you still feel like, you know, like, you know, the, the way that uh, the Bible talks about, right, the goodness of God, right, the faithfulness of God. You know, I don't, I don't, really, I don't really feel it, you know, in my life. You know, I'm not really satisfied, you know, in the way that uh, all these people, you know, 
uh, were in the Bible, whether it's the prophets or, or King David or the disciples, disciples and Apostle Paul. So I just, you know, just keep that question in mind, you know. Is, are there in, a, any ways in my life uh, that I still, instead of being brought out of my poverty, right, are, are, are there still places of uh, brokenness and, and poverty? And it says that he came to bind up the brokenhearted, right? And, you know, I, it just kind of, it's funny now that I, like, go back to my old sermons and, you know, I was thinking about, oh, binding up the brokenhearted, that sounds like, you remember uh, the message I preached on about the, uh, well, it was titled Samaritan Jesus, right? Samaritan Jesus, and he gives a story, right? Uh, after someone tries to uh, test him, right, who is my, my neighbor, right? He gives a story of uh, this Samaritan, right, helping uh, this person who was robbed, right? And all the other uh, spiritual people, right, right, the Pharisee and, and the scribe, you know, they they, uh, or the Levites and, and the Pharisee, they pass him by, right? Yet the Samaritan, right, who was despised, you know, who was, um, who was, who was perceived as uh, kind of like, actually like a, like a dog, you know, to the Jews because they looked down on them so much. You know, this Samaritan person comes and uh, remember what that person does? Don't make me go to the, don't make me <laughs> make them find the, the scripture on, on, on the PowerPoints, but basically he comes, right? Um, he, well, it's actually the same word that is used, right? He, he binds him up, right? Because he was, he was left for the dead, right? He was beaten, right? He was robbed. So he, he binds him up, right? His wounds. He uses the oil, right, that he had, right? The precious oil that he had to uh, cleanse and soothe, right? The wounds that he had. And he puts him on his own animal, it says, Right? And he, he takes him to the inn and pays, right, uh, for all that is necessary for him uh, to, uh, to get taken care of. So, you know, I, w- I want to ask you again, you know, um, are, there, uh, any, are there things in your life, are there ways in your life uh, in which you feel like, okay, you know, I, I, I believe in God, you know, I, I've served him, I've walked with him, um, but... You know, there's a sense in which your heart, uh, it doesn't feel like it's, it, it's whole. You know? and, and it's the same thing, right? It's the same thing, theme, uh, that you, you feel this uh, poverty in your spirit, in your heart. There's this brokenness. You know, it's, it's one thing to talk about, um, you know, you may have all the Bible knowledge. You know, you may, ha- you may know the Bible stories. And you've heard a, a thousand sermons, right? Uh, great sermons, not from me, but from Pastor David, <laughs> and maybe in the future. But and you have this uh, agreement, like you know this as truth. You know, I, I get the gospel. You know, and 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 I I feel like I have a relationship with God. You know, I I try to obey the word, um, but there's a sense of just brokenheartedness in your in your life. You know, and and that can take many forms, right? And I, I think even inside church, you know, uh, you know, we can be busy uh, just, you know, trying to build a church, but you don't really get to share, right, these uh, brokenness, brokennesses in, uh, in your life. And, you know, it says that he came to proclaim freedom for the captives and release them from darkness, right, basically. So, you know, I want to ask you, do you um, just the same question, right, just in a different way. Uh, do, you, do you feel like you don't have that, that freedom right, in your life? You know, when you are here to, to worship God, do you feel like you're, you're held back somehow, you know? And I, don't, I, I know, of course, it's not, you know, I'm not trying to just look at, like, how you guys are worshiping, you know, during, during the worship time. You know, I myself, I'm, I'm kind of shy, you know? Uh, but I think... A lot of us, I think this is maybe, um, maybe I'm, I'm speaking something uh, just, you know, prophet- prophetically about what God is going to do. But I think at JSM, you know, a lot of us, we, we, we are uh, mature. You know, I think a lot of you guys are more mature than me. And uh, you have, yeah, walked with God and served God. And there's a lot of excellence in your life 
whether it's in your workplace or even serving in church. Um, but I think uh, when, when it comes to really uh, experiencing the, this joy, right, in the place of worship, right, um, and it's, I'm not just talking about, you know, like 30 minutes on, on Sundays, but I'm just talking about uh, there, there's this sense where, like, you feel like, uh, like, I'm not quite sure that I can really go fully, really go fully out, right? I'm not sure if I can go full out and really love and express my, my heart, right, my joy for the Lord, because uh, there, there's something that, that holds me back, something that holds me down. So, you know, I, w- I want to ask you, you know, is, um, is there such uh, lack of freedom, right? Is there, are there ways in which you feel still um, in prison, right, in prisons? And, you know, that can take also many forms, right? A lot of us, we have, um, you know, I want to, you know, hopefully maybe, you know, break this down a little bit, um, but one thing I want to just share, right, just from my heart, just spontaneously, is that um, when God asks us, right, just like I said in, in the beginning um, in my prayer, you know, this deep just keeps coming back to me. You know, when we are asked, right, to uh, give him our lives, right, and maybe some of us, we have done that, maybe some of us, we're, we still haven't, you know, done that fully. But regardless, I think we have the same tendency, right? We have this tendency to say, Oh, you know, like, God, I want to, like, I want to try all that I can, right, uh, without uh, losing my salvation, without losing my relationship with you. And, you know, I want to hold on t- to some things in my life. And, and it's like, you know, you understand the goodness of God. You understand the, uh, the love of God. But you, you, you have this question, right, this nagging question, right, in the back of your mind. You know, why, why is God so, like, like demanding, you know, you know, it, it feels like, I don't, I don't know if it's just me, but a lot of times, you know, you just have this image about God, um, that he is a, a stingy God, right? He's like, okay, you know, you still haven't, you know, given me, you know, everything, you still haven't obeyed, you know, me uh, fully, so I can't quite give you really all the blessings, you know, that I have in store for you, and it's, it feels like, we are, even though, right, we try not to look at it that way, I think we have this tendency to try to, like, you know, earn, right? right? If, I, if I failed, right, isn't that, isn't that why when you, when you fail to obey the commands of God, you feel kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, God's probably not that pleased. You know, he, maybe he kind of, you know, does God really love me, right? If God really loves me, why am I, why have I experienced, right, all this poverty, right, of, of my heart, poverty of my spirit? Why have I experienced uh, this, this brokenheartedness? And whether it, it comes from your past experiences, whether it comes from your, your families, whether it comes from just, uh, just, I don't know, just bad experiences, right, you've had with God and with people, um, I think there's there's a sense that that keeps nagging at us, right? That there's even though Jesus came to proclaim, right, to, to fulfill all this ministry, right? I, I'm still not there, even though I I view myself as Christian, right? And you know, as I was thinking about this, um, I was just looking at a verse uh, four. Or it starts from three. We can look at it together. And provide for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. And, and, and as I was uh, just studying this text and meditating on it, you know, I, 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 I learned, right? I realized something. You know, we have to get the message of the gospel clear because the message of the gospel is not about uh, self-improvement, right? 
It's not, a, it's not an add-on. But I think even as we try to believe that, I think we, okay, like, let me try to break this down. I think a lot of us, including myself, you know, maybe, maybe just myself, but I think when I come to God, right, instead of feeling like, okay, God gave me uh, his beauty and I gave him my ashes, right? God gave me his joy and I gave him my mourning. God gave me his garment of praise, right? And I gave him my despair. Instead of, instead of this exchange, I think we, how we feel like is we come to God and it's like I still have my ashes. I still have my mourning. I still have my despair. But, you know, God just kind of added on. Like, he, so I'm covered with ashes, right? And that's what they did, the Jews. When there was uh, a tragedy, a great tragedy, when there was death, it was like a funeral thing, right? And that's why still um, in the Western part of the culture, you wear black. But back then, it wasn't just nice little uh, black suits, right? They would really cover their head. It would come down on their faces, right? And you are covered in black. But then you still have the ashes on you, and, and God just comes and be like, okay, let me, let me see how, how well you behave, you know, how, how much you obey. And depending on that, I'm going to, uh, you know, just add on a little bit of beauty, you know, just little at a time on your ashes. And it's the same thing, right? We, we feel like um, in our faith, right, in our walk with God, we come to God, and there's this uh, sense of mourning in our hearts, right, for different reasons. But it's like instead of replacing that, we feel like we still have it, and God's just kind of like a, dipping a little bit of oil and like, okay, let me, you know, depending on how much we do for God. You know, we feel that way. And also we carry this uh, uh, despair, right, in our lives for different reasons. And we come to God and, and, and we still have the despair inside, right? And, and, you know, we hear about the garment of praise. But, it, there, but it, there, we feel like, okay, but, you know, isn't that why we hear, we're here to worship, right? Um, and I'm not, just, I'm not just, again, you know, making about, like, you know, your performance, right? Worship is not a performance. Uh, but I think uh, we, we have that despair in our lives. And when we hear the songs, right? And, and this, that's basically what it is, right? The, the garment of praise, right? Um, we, we, we don't have this uh, exchange, right? That God takes away my despair, right? And he gives us his... Uh, praise, right? His garment of praise. So, you know, I, I, I want to just, you know, keep it kind of simple, but um, I think God was, you know, I, I was just thinking about the, the heart of God, you know, and I think there, there, there's a, uh, it, it's more than compassion, you know, there, there's uh, there's anguish, there's sadness in, in God's heart. Because what God is trying to do in our lives is he's trying to take away, right? He's trying to take away the ashes, right? The brokenness, you know, the pains, the sorrows. He's trying to take away our, our mourning, right? Our, our, our depression, right? Uh, the dark things in our lives, the sins. He's trying to take away, right, our, our despair. Uh, but... But it's like we, we hold on to them, and without, we don't even know that we are, right? And isn't that how we look at the, the law of God? You know, I just keep going back to this, but when we hear, you know, the call, right, the commands to obey, you know, we feel like uh, we are, we have to sacrifice a lot, right? But God is saying that, you know, all these things that I ask of you, right, um, when you do them, um, this exchange uh, happens. When you obey my law, when you obey my commands, the more fully you do it, the more radically you do it, uh, this exchange uh, takes place. Right? We get to give him our, our pains, right? our ashes. We get to give him our, our, 
our sins, right, our depression. And he gives us his, his joy. He gives us his, his own beauty, right, his worth. So, you know, I, I just want to, um, I won't keep you for much longer, but let's go to uh, Isaiah 53. And I want you to see how these are connected. Okay, maybe we'll, we can read from, we'll just, I think it's, it's there, so we'll read from just uh, verse 2 through 8. Okay, so keep in mind uh, the exchange, right, that takes place, right, instead of, instead of, right? And this is how, and this is why it happens that way. Verse 2, Jesus, it's about Jesus, right? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of a dry ground, he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him. Nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held him in low esteem. Surely he took up our pain and bore our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions, he was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray, each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his, its his shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested, for he was cut off from the land of the living? For the transgression of my people, he was punished. And I want you to just, maybe I just can kind of wind down with this. Uh, take, take a look at chap, uh, verse, verse 4. It says, surely, and that word it really is, uh, but certainly, Okay, but truly, nevertheless, he took up our pain and bore our suffering. Okay, and and uh, if you look at the Hebrew text, there are two different words that are used for this verse. Right? And it's kind of interesting. I was like, it's kind of talking about the same thing. Why use two different words for taking up and then bearing? Okay, taking up and then bearing. And then I was just uh, you know, reminded of, of the gospel, right? So the pains, right, the sins that we have, the brokenness that we have, the, the ashes, right, uh, that we have in our lives, the mourning, the despair. It, it's not like God just comes and, uh, you know, he just makes them like just poof, right, just vanish them into thin air, right? That's not how it happens. And I think this verse really, it, it, it teaches that, right? The reason why God can come and he can take our, our pains and our sorrows and our sins is because he not only just takes it from us, right, but then he takes it upon himself, right? He, he carries it. And I think that's why those two words are used. He takes it from us so as to take it upon himself, right? And that's why Jesus said, right, my yoke is easy, my burden is light, right? So, you know, I just want to close with that. Um, I think we really have to come to a place where we, um, because I think it's hard, because we have uh, the things that we have to do. We have our responsibilities, you know, um, as someone who works, you know, who tries to uh, excel in the workplace. And some of us are students. You know, we have busy 
lives and, and, and you know, work culture, especially in Korea. But I think we have to really come to a place, you know, God, um, are there uh, any ways in my life where I, I still feel the poverty, I'm still the poor, and I, I still have that, that despair, I still have the ashes, I, I carry it, right? And I, I try to hide it before other people, right? Even church people. Um, but I think a lot of us, we know this, okay, you know, I, you know, I, I get it, right? It, it needs to be exchanged, right? But I think because we have such busy lives, I think we have learned, uh, we have learned how to, how to kind of push it aside, right? So it's like a, it's like a house, right? And we have all the uh, messy things, like our houses. Um, I'm not pointing at her because it's her fault. I should clean it up, honey. I should clean it up. But, but what, what do you do when you are busy, right? You, just, you, you have to work. You just sleep, go out, sleep, go out. What happens to the house? Right? It, it, gets, it turns into a, a trash can, right? And it, it's not that, our home is not that bad. She might say it is, but... Um, but I think that's, that's kind of what happens to us. And um, I pray that somehow speaks to you, you know, at JSM in this uh, country, you know, in this land. And I'm not saying that uh, what you pursue, you know, in life, if it's clearly given by God, you know, of course you have to be faithful to it. But I think we, we've learned, like, we, we like we've adapted, you know. Uh, we just kind of put it aside, right? We brush it off and... And we've learned how to manage just okay. You know, even though um, I know that this exchange is not, of course, you know, it doesn't just happen at once, right? Uh, a lot of it is progressive. But I think a lot of us, it, the, pro the progress has halted, right? It has come to a, spot, a stop. It, it's, not, it's not going any further. It's not getting any better. But we've, we've just learned how to, you know, just life is like that, you know. Uh, look at all the other Christians, you know, they're suffering, you know, they seem pretty miserable. So I think we've, we've learned how to just kind of, yeah, not uh, come to a place where we uh, cry out, God, I know that you love me. The word says, right, Jesus loves me, this I know. Uh, it's so simple, but such a profound truth because we don't need anything other than that, right? And it's not that just, it's not just that God loves us right? But he is sovereign, right? Isn't that what it said? The sovereign Lord has anointed Jesus. Not, to, not just to preach the good news 2,000 some years ago, but in our lives today, right? So what are the things, what are the ways in your life uh, where you feel uh, you're still, right, uh, with the poor, right? And you're still, um, you're wearing the ashes, right? You still have that despair and you, you, you carry Right, so that heaviness of spirit. And, you know, I, I just want to uh, make it practical, you know, and I'll, I'll close with this. But uh, So I think we have to kind of break out of this, this, this mode of just uh, busy, busy, busy. You know, I got to get this done and get that done. Um, you know, what, what are the ways, right, in my life uh, where uh, this exchange still it hasn't happened? Okay, and... and Maybe some of us, it, it has happened before, but like I said, it, it's, it stopped. Or maybe some of us, you know, you kind of understand intellectually what I'm talking about, but you haven't really had experience. You know, this is not an experiential truth. Um, you know, either way, I think, you know, God just wants to uh, speak to, to us, to me, that uh, just like, you know, my, my sermon last week, we need to go back again, right? We need to go back again and... And again, you know, the power doesn't lie within us, you know. Uh, if you've had any kind of addiction before, right, um, I, I, I hope you don't, but in a way, uh, it helps. You know, I, you know I, my wife, we talk about um, this, uh, what do you call it, this compulsion, right, like OCD type of things. And it's a form of addiction, right? You're fixated on certain things. And it's like when we try to, solve it out, right? When we try to get rid of the addictions, right? Whatever compulsion we have, it's almost like the, the harder you try, the more it backfires, okay? And, and it's the same thing with sin, right? It's the same thing with 
our rebelliousness, our coldness, our unwillingness right, to obey a God. So the hope you know, that we have, uh, maybe we can just look at the verse and end with that. Just go back to Isaiah 61. Um, we'll read from verse 7. So it's talking about the same thing, right? The same language of exchange. Instead of your shame you will receive a double portion, and instead of disgrace, you will rejoice in your inheritance. So you will inherit a double portion in your land, and everlasting joy will be yours. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. In my faithfulness, I will reward my people and make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants will be known among the nations and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them will acknowledge that they are people of the Lord, that the Lord has blessed. I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness, as a bridegroom adorns his head like a priest, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. So what we have here is, does God say, uh, just work harder and try harder, uh, then you will get my, my double portion, you know, my blessing? No, he says, you have sins, and I, I see the brokenness in our lives as much as that you know, as much as God you know, has compassion, right, for all of our sins, right, we stand before him guilty. But instead of, right, giving us what we deserve, he's saying, you know, instead of your shame, I'm going to give you something that you don't deserve, right? Instead of the disgrace that you deserve, I'm going to give you, right, my inheritance, right? And that's how this, this instead, right, that's why I titled it, you know, instead, right, instead, and, um, you know, for me, I really close with this, it was really comforting that, um, that God doesn't give me what I, what I deserve, you know, and that's really the teaching of the Bible, right? It says that even our righteous works are, according to the real standards of God's holiness, they're like filthy rags, right? There's nothing that we earn from him. There's nothing uh, that we can maintain, that which we have received from him. You know, it's all by the grace of God. And we, this is the promise that we have, right? Uh, it's not just us trying to, you know, just make it happen, right? This exchange, right? Uh, what he simply asks, you know, just like uh, all those times that Jesus right, would speak, right, to the people, right? When he calls out, right? All that the sick people, right? The broken people, the poor people, the hungry people, right? All they had to do was, come to Jesus, right? And he fed them, right? He healed them. And he replaced, right, uh, their despair, their mourning, their ashes, right, with his own beauty, right, with his own joy and with his own worth. So let's pray. So Father, we just thank you that we're, we're not just talking um, abstract things, God. It's not, it's not merely figurative. And we thank you, God, that Jesus, you're not just a, a great teacher. You're not just a philosopher because your work is ongoing. This is the time of the Lord's favor, which means it's, it's the Jubilee year that comes from Leviticus 25, where all the slaves were let go. All the debts were forgiven. All the wrongdoing, God, was forgiven. And God, you gave that command to Israel, but Israel, they couldn't actually observe that law, the Jubilee year, the, every 50th year. 
letting go of all the debts and all the slaves, all the captives. They couldn't keep it because it was too radical, God. They were unwilling to do that, just like our hearts are unwilling so many times. And that's why Jesus, the man of Jubilee, came. Because the law was just a foreshadow, God. You gave it and you knew that the people couldn't keep it. So Jesus, you came, not just 2,000 years ago, but you are here today. God, and all you ask of us is to, to face it, God, to face our sins, God, our brokenness, our depression, God. All the brokenness, all the ashes in our lives. And this world has made us uh, just to be okay with it. And you just, life goes on, but that's not how it should be, God, with the life of a Christian. Things have to be dealt with, God. This exchange needs to happen. And it happens through the work of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, that you did not leave us as orphans. Because, Holy Spirit, if you didn't come, then we would have been forever, God, poor, wearing the ashes, the despair. But, God, you've come, Holy Spirit, and you're asking us, God, to examine our hearts. And, and no more just just going on with life because God you are saying instead of all these things I want to give you what I have and you're not the ones that are going to sacrifice I sacrificed by sending my son Jesus so can we just pray right now um, just ask him God what are, what are these things these ways that I still wear and carry the ashes and the despair and the mourning in my life that are caused by sins or different circum broken circumstances in life from family in the homes or from the past from other people or maybe internally whatever it may be can we just ask uh, the holy spirit to reveal those things to us and just really touch us speak to us and just a work, a move in our lives, just right here, right now. Okay, let's just do that right now. God, we know, God, that you are sovereign, God. And we thank you, God, the, the spirit that anointed Jesus is sovereign, God. The sovereign Lord anointed him to do all that the Father has commanded him to do. God, you fulfill, God, all the law, God, you finish the work, God. And all you ask of us is to face, God, the reality, the truth, God, and go beyond, God, the ignorance, the pride of our own hearts, God. We don't want to be like the Pharisees who thought they were better and they thank God that they were not like the other men. But Jesus, you came, God, even for those, God, you came because it was shame and disgrace that we all deserved but Jesus, you came, and Holy Spirit, you're ready. God, you're more than willing, God, to give us in place, God, in, instead of our mourning, God, our ashes, and our spirit of despair and, and, and heaviness. God, you're giving us new joy. You're giving us new wine, God. And we want to continue, God, to stay in that place, stay in that place, God. How many more Sundays have to go by when we are still, God, experiencing the poverty, God, the despair and the brokenness? We want to encounter you now, Holy Spirit. You do it in my life now, in my heart now, because you know, God, those things in my life. Holy Spirit, will you break us, break through right now?
just continue to pray a little more and right back to it and that's that's what dogs do that's what pigs gotta do they go straight back to the mud but God Father's heart be poured out in Jesus name God, the truth is, until we encounter this intimacy with Jesus in which all the ugliness, all the messed up things that we have, we can freely give to him because he took it up. He took up our pains and put it on himself and carried it to the cross and it was nailed. It was a done deal. And when we believed in you and surrendered our, our lives to your Lordship, God, that work of the cross, God, it became our present reality. But it didn't end there. Holy Spirit, you're still applying, God, what happened 2,000 years ago on the cross. And you will be faithful, God, to carry it onto completion. And that's the hope we have, God. That's the garment of salvation. It's the garment of hope. It's our trust in the finished work, in the righteousness of Christ, in the promises of God. Every one of them, God, will be fulfilled in our lives. God, we lay hold individually and as a church. We lay hold of every promise that's in this Bible because you didn't give this, these, all these promises just to make us, just to make us Jealous, God, because we can't have them just to keep us guessing if they will apply to us or not. God, we have a firm foundation, God. And we thank you, God, for the perfect life, the perfect sacrifice of Jesus Christ on our behalf. And you give us that which the exact thing, God, that we don't deserve Until we, until we know you, until we begin to walk with you again in that way, God, in that intimacy, God, in that exchange. God, no matter what we try to do, God, everything can work out in our lives, in our jobs, God, in our search for spouses, and the things that we want to accomplish, even the call of God. God, we, we can have all those things sorted out. And we can still come out not knowing this Jesus, the man of Jubilee, who came and, and took away all that were harmful, God, all that were broken, God, in our lives. So just by faith, God, we just thank you for all the works that you are going to do, God, in our lives and in this church. You're going to do a new thing, God. We are going to experience, God, that oil of joy. We're going to experience, we're going to wear, God, that beautiful headdress. We're going to experience, God, that 
garment of praise. So we thank you, God, that we are already your bride, invited to the wedding feast. And we're not living our lives like at funerals, wearing black and ashes, because life is such. But we thank you, God, that this is your promise and that you're going to be faithful, God, to keep it and carry it out until the day of Jesus' return. So we just thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one that could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. There is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Holy there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder, show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. I will Upon your love, it is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken, and I will feel my life. Upon your love, it is a firm foundation. I will put my trust in you alone, and I will not be shaken like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder. Show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me.
we just uh, thank you that we get to have this this sure promise, God, in our lives. We thank you, God, that we have a firm foundation, God. So we just give you our lives. God, what more can we give, God, in light of all that you've given us? You've taken away, God, our shame, our mourning, our despair. And you gave us all that you had, God. And even if we're presently struggling with that, God, we just thank you, God. We just rejoice in that you will be faithful, God, to give us the double portion, God, the inheritance, God, in the lands of the living, because you were cut off, God, from the land of the living on our behalf. So we just give you our tithes and offerings. God, may it be an expression, God, of our hearts towards you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good afternoon, guys. Yeah, I have a couple announcements as usual. Uh, we have a prayer meeting this week as well, Saturday. 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> it was so good yesterday as well. Uh, I could really feel the presence of Holy Spirit there, feel the room. So just come and taste and see how the Lord is good. Um, 10 o'clock, this building, fifth floor. Okay, so come. Uh, oh, yeah, from next week, uh, we're going to have a Bible reading um, instead of Bible studying. <laughs> we're going to just read a Bible together uh, from 1 o'clock in room 412. Uh, it feels like God, um, there's no like strong leader in this church now, and like there's no good teacher <laughs> in this church. So I think Holy Spirit is trying to uh, tell us and convict in my heart that uh, you have to go back to the foundation um, where uh, this church was built. So, so Romans and Galatians, uh, Ephesians, uh, we're going to read it uh, from 1 o'clock. Uh, so from 1 to 1.30, um, we're going we're gonna to read Romans. Yeah, we're going to keep reading it. Yeah, keep reading it, reading it together. So come, yeah, if you can. And... Please come, yeah, please come. And nobody's going to teach anything, yeah. <laughs> Holy Spirit's going to teach something. And then, um, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, we, we, we're going to actually start prepping 1.30ish. And, uh, yeah, you can set up a chair, you know, those who come came early, you are blessed, right? Yeah. So we we're kind of sharing um, at the back, like, you know, it's like it's a fellowship and, like, you know, with the Lord and sweet love so come early if you can and um 한국말 통역이 제공됩니다. 어 우리 트랜슬레이터 실비아가 어 yeah she's she's been translating um so yeah if you want to actually bring Korean friends that's good too. And then, as you know we actually post up the sermons every week. Yep. So Jesus Street Ministry and then like type in um date of today or something then you can actually uh, listen to it again, and there is a verse that I actually prepared. Yeah, this. So, so um, this week, you know, with the, um, with the last week's in line with the last week's sermon. So I I visited. I went back again uh, to see what's in uh, in my heart, like holding. And um, yeah, it was uh, it was a good week actually. You know, I apologize because I got <laughs> highlighted something in me inside. So I, you know, it's like long ago. You know, um, during the Bible study, you know, I was like carried away with the theological question, intellectual mindset. You know that I had. So I kind of, 
you know, I carried, carried uh, with all theological um, debate with Pastor David. So <laughs> I think I was feeling, um, you know, I was making people uncomfortable in the, you know, I didn't, I wasn't mature enough. So I was apologizing in the text and apologizing um, to the people. I couldn't do everybody, but, you know, I think, um, you know, God was highlighting um, things in my heart. So I kind of repented and then I was asking God, like, what now then? You know, there is a bitterness and I, I forgive and like, okay, so there are, there are repentance in my heart. But what now? What now? You know, I was asking God about that. But then, um, like, he highlighted this verse in my heart so much. Uh, and then I was reading, um, doing my homework, actually. Uh, uh, one of, you know, the deadly, seven deadly sins. Uh, one of the deadly sins was I had to actually read it and then um, summarize it. So I was doing that this morning, too. Um, it was about, the uh, title was about the laziness. <laughs> So, you know, so, and then the, the, the first thing, <laughs> the first thing was very, um, you know, the, this the modern society, people are so busy with their work and they're really busy, busy. So they don't think that they, uh, you know, they, they have something laziness in their heart. So that's the starting point. But then, um, you know, from what I found from the book was that spiritual laziness is that you don't actively love that's a spiritual laziness. You don't actively love. So I was thinking about this, and then um, I think God created us to be loved and to love so much. It's in our nature to love so much, and then we delay and delay and put off, put off this loving actively, then we're gonna actually dry ourselves up because we are born, we're created like that, to love and be loved so much. So actively love that's not um that's the opposite uh the definition of lazy spiritual laziness so i wanted to actually highlight this verse um and read it together with you guys so i uh prepared like four different versions of this same verse so let's read it together okay ready go above all love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Most importantly of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. The last one, stay, oh, ready, go. Stay wide awake in prayer. Most of all, love each other as if your life depended on it. Love makes up for practically anything. So, um, yeah, <laughs> let's continue to actually meditate on this and, yes, yeah, actively love God and actively love each other, you know. So let's um, get out of this uh, spiritual laziness uh, <laughs> that we might have, right? So, okay, please rise up for the closing song, yeah. <laughs> 